For the wicked, they say, there's no peace. But good kilties, they suffer much worse. Often they get on their frost-bitten knees, and shellfire and mortars brought forth a curse. Here we are, down on the Somme. Not for long, we all are wishing. I'd rather be in Scottish home. They'd be hunting, shooting, or fishing. Well, it's a thing that one never thinks of until you see it in the, in the papers that there's a war somewhere else in the country. Then it brings back memories of why all these fellows died to make peace in this world. And then it's still happy. Innocent young men being shot. Hmm. It's a long time ago. And I haven't caught out it. I, I, I can't possibly forget it. I am writing to you just before going into action tomorrow morning about dawn. I am about to take part in the biggest battle that has yet been fought in France, and one which ought to help the war very quickly. I never felt more confident or cheerful in my life before. I would not miss the attack for anything on earth. We all have one great ambition, to see Germany smashed, and then have the time of our life upon our return home. Why did you volunteer? Well, I, I, didn't, I don't know whether it, was, whether it was patriotism or excitement I wanted. I saw so many other people joining, so I thought I'll do likewise. Yes. They said the war would be over in six months, so I thought, well, six months, what's that? We might as well go away. Go away for six months. Yeah. I'm afraid it wasn't six months. <coughs> the shell fire was terrific. So we sensed something terrific was going to happen. The shells fired night and day, night and day, and then on the 1st of July, it sort of stopped and we went forward. Yeah. And of course, well, as we know, it's four and a half months it was the worst period of the war, that was. Yeah, the worst period of the war. I think more people killed in that four and a half months than in any other, any other period, at any other time. Dawn was just breaking, and a heavy mist hung over everywhere, shutting out any view of the line. We marched up last night, the most exciting march imaginable. Guns all around us crashed and roared till sometimes it was quite impossible to hear oneself speak. It was, however, a fine sight, and one realized from it what gunpowder really means. Well, we, we'd be going forward, the whole line be going forward. Forward, 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 and now you'd be, one minute you'd be speaking to someone on your right, say, oh, well, isn't this terrible? One of what's going to happen to us. If you turn away and then you turn back again, you discover this fellow's missing. He's gone. Just a shell, bit of a shell would knock him down. And then he brings you turn around the other fellow, the other two or three people missing that side. And others would go, go forward, of course, and we join up. We never knew when I was going to be next. Why did they go into it? Who? England. Why did England go into the war? Yeah. <clears throat> well, we were friendly with... Which country was it? Poland. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't Poland, no. 
they were friendly. And they, they said, well, if you touch them, you'll go into trouble. <coughs> I don't know. So, so, I don't know which country. It wasn't Czechoslovakia. Where was it? I forget. He was a, the king was assassinated. I should be ashamed of myself. I haven't read the history, have I? No, I've forgotten. It's a long time ago, from 1914. Yes, they were assassinated. West Kent Regiment. That might might have been for me. These one of these things, but the thing gone for the not. There, but for the grace of God. Yeah. Shrapnel was flying all over the place. We seemed to go on for a year. Men were going down every minute, and since there had previously been bodies lying all the way, the place began to look a bit rotten. I've got six to go, right? Thirty-six, what is that? Thirty-six, very good. By the time the day is over, and you, you get back at the end of the day, you're, co you're called back, and you, you gather some spot several hundred yards behind, or perhaps half a mile, and there are only 75 of you left out of 800. And you think, where's so-and-so? I haven't seen him. Oh, I saw him. He was lying down. He's got his arm blown off. Or somebody lying wounded in the head. And you say, oh, my goodness, where's so-and-so? Oh, he's not here either. So at the end of the day, you, you count about 75 of us out of 800, which is appalling to think of that. Appalling that you could lose so many men in one day. you live with the dead. You could speak to them at night, as I have done, without knowing they were dead, propped up as they sometimes were at the side of a trench. You stumbled over them, kicked their arms or feet, trod on bits of them, and the air that you breathed was foul with them. I know perfectly well I wouldn't be forgotten because I had letters from nearly all the people in the village, including the minister and the headmaster of the school and various pupils and my parents and relations. Even letters from Canada and cigarettes from Canada. Oh yes, I wasn't forgotten. Hmm. Probably trapped in here, were they? Hmm? When they wrote this on the wall, they were probably didn't expect to get out, did they? I wasn't scared, but it was pitiful to watch your own comrades lying there, some with no arm on, and others wounded here and there, couldn't walk. I wasn't scared. We had to put up with it. We were soldiers. We were paid to do that. We had to do it. It was orders. If you hadn't done the you don't know what would have happened to you. And the roses will die with the summer time And the rose lay before the One is supposed to have, as a soldier going into action, no other desire than some high-souled ambition to do or die for his country. Reality, I am afraid, falls far short. We go because it is right and proper that we should. But I do not think that there is one high souled amongst us. Good. 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 Good.
Then the night come, you didn't see anything more. Just overnight, and wondering what's going to happen next day. Then the same thing would start at daybreak about four, four or five o'clock in the morning. Up again. Dig yourself deeper into the ground. Make the trenches deeper and wider so you could get protection. They weren't like that before, you know. They've fallen in now. Are they? Yeah. Are they much wider then? Well, they've fallen in. They used to be straight up. Like yeah. a house is straight. Obviously, obviously they were wider. Well, they? so they did. It depends where they were. Some were wider than others. Was it cold in there? Wet? Oh, yeah. Well, like this, there was no shelter. No shelter whatsoever. So uh, you could actually see across to the enemy then? Oh, well, of course we could, yeah. These trees weren't there then. No. No. When you had a sleep, did you take it in turns? Oh, yes, there was always somebody on duty. Did you get shot at at night or not? Oh, the, the, the Germans couldn't see us. We were, we were down below. Yeah, but they knew you were there. Great news came in late last night. The Germans have retired from our immediate front. They have carried this movement out under cover of the thick mist of the last week, and it explains their silence yesterday. We lost 600,000 to gain us 45 villages, eight sizable woods, and an advance of nearly six miles. By military arithmetic, it was a great victory. Voilà.